The iPhone 13 mini came out about two months ago and it's absolutely one of my favorite cell phones of all time. So how has it been holding up since we unboxed it? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad. If I can figure it out, you can figure it out. I meant to make this video so much sooner, but those darn MacBooks came out and kind of took over my content schedule. So instead of one month later, we get a two months later video. First off, I do want to make a quick note that while Apple let me borrow an iPhone mini at launch, and that was the phone in the unboxing video, this particular mini 13 is my personal phone. Nobody provided this to me. And second, as this is a follow-up video, expect to hear my refined thoughts on the phone after the past two months. There shouldn't be anything too earth shattering as I've neither seen new mind boggling features added, nor have I experienced any game breaking bugs. Before we get into my likes and dislikes, as it's been a couple of months, let's quickly cover the pricing information for the iPhone 13 mini in case you're a normal person and you don't just have all this stuff memorized all the time. I also don't have it memorized all the time. The iPhone 13 mini is actually the cheapest phone in the 13 series. It comes in a variety of colors. I'm kind of partial to the starlight color myself. And at the base model, its price is $699. For that money, you'll get the brand new A15 Bionic processor, 128 gigabytes of storage, a 5.4 inch Super Retina XDR display, and the very much updated camera system from the bigger, badder parts of the iPhone lineup. You can get additional storage going up to 512 gigabytes, which will cost you $999. You probably noticed in the title of this video that I called this my favorite. And just because it's my favorite doesn't mean it's perfect. So let's get into the things that I don't like first. Here, okay, here's the thing, right? In a vacuum, like when we look at the phone just by itself, there's nothing I dislike. I like the price, I like the camera, I like the build. This is basically the perfect phone for me. However, as a tech YouTuber that has a ton of other devices in my house, namely the iPhone 13 Pro Max, then there are some things that now irritate me that you would probably never noticed if you weren't some kind of crazy person that makes videos about this stuff on the internet. I am not the norm here. So while I don't like these things, understand that I don't like them in comparison to the most expensive iPhone. Is that fair? Absolutely not, but that's how human brains work, and I'm not some cold, callous, calculating machine laying out specs in front of you today. Easily the thing I dislike most is the battery life. I got it, that's the single biggest Achilles heel for all of the mini phones, and probably the reason they don't sell as well as the rest of the lineup. Apple absolutely did some great things in being able to keep the same size of the phone and increase the battery life by a pretty wide margin compared to the iPhone 12 mini. I find that I do make it through the day and can fairly comfortably make it for my 6 a.m. wake up to 10 p.m. bedtime, and most days, I will have no issues with my phone. And here's where I think the nitpicking comes into play, because that right there, what I just said, is amazing battery life. If I go back in time only a few years ago, being able to use my phone normally throughout the day and have it make all the way from wake up to bedtime without needing an additional charge, that would have blown my mind. Like that would have been the best battery life I've ever seen. But I don't know. I always feel like the battery's gonna run out and I feel like I do have to ration it at times. And there are things that I just won't do because I'm concerned that I'm gonna kill the battery on this thing. And yes, I get it. There's so much waffling here. And I even went back and forth on adding this section into the video, but it's a video on what I like and dislike. And while objectively the battery does meet my metric for success, subjectively, you know, human being Gary here, I just don't like it when my 13 Pro Max can make it two whole days on one charge. This section right here is tearing me apart on the inside, by the way. The only other thing I really don't like here is the lack of Apple Pro Raw. If you don't know what that is, it's Apple's way of combining raw photos with their computational enhancements, and it's easily my favorite photo file system of all time. But Apple keeps it strictly to their Pro Phone, and I thought maybe last year it was because the good camera was only on the 12 Pro Max, so maybe they held it that way for 2020. But the 13 mini has basically the same camera as that phone and a much more powerful processor, so it can handle that. They just chose not to let it have Pro Raw. And that's pretty rare from Apple to lock a software feature behind a higher price phone. I don't like it. Okay, so that's my airing of grievances with the iPhone 13 mini. But I did say again that this is my favorite phone. So what's all the hubbub about? The first thing I like easily is the size. I don't like big phones. I just don't like big tech. I think the future of human advancement should be in getting our own personal tech smaller and smaller, not bigger and bigger. The size of this phone is incredible. It's got more screen real estate than some of the much bigger earlier model iPhones. It fits in pockets so well that it almost disappears. Weighs very little compared to the brick that is my 13 Pro Max. This is just very, very well laid out. I like how much easier one-handed typing is on the iPhone 13 mini. Sure, 
If I've got a particular quick hot take tweet to get out to the world, yeah, two-handed typing isn't too bad either, but for most interactions or Reddit scrolling, this size is just right. Plus, you've probably noticed here on the channel, I've always got my phone in some kind of a case, and sometimes that can push a normal phone into being too big. But because you start off with a much smaller platform here, getting something like the Apple leather case on top adds very little to the overall size and bulk, keeping it just as sleek and as small as needed. The next thing I really like is the price. $699 is not necessarily cheap, but it puts you pretty squarely in line with the Google Pixel 6 or last year's Samsung Galaxy S20. So you've got pretty good competition here and you'll be getting the cutting edge Apple A15 processor, doubled storage from last year, and probably the single best camera in the phone game today. Yes, we lose out on Apple Pro Raw, which is absolutely frustrating, but you don't really lose out on anything else from the iOS perspective. You're getting 95% of the capabilities of the 13 Pro Max for about half the price. Now, I'm not a math major, but that sounds like a pretty good deal to me. I also really like that they were able to keep that same price while increasing the battery life and doubling the storage capacity. Last year's 64 gigabyte at the base, that was kind of a hard sell in 2020. I personally think that 128 gigabytes is just about the right amount of storage for a phone. So seeing this at the base level where you don't need to pay extra, that's absolutely winning in my book. And as a personal note, I honestly, why would you want more than that? I take a ton of photos and I do frequent 4K video for this channel and I'm at roughly 40 gigabytes. 128 is just, just the perfect amount for phone. The next thing I've really liked is that main camera. I think I said this in the one week later video, but the iPhone 13 mini is like the perfect point and shoot camera. That wide angle lens has a physically larger sensor than last year's model and it's probably the best cell phone camera that I've ever seen. You'll get better low light performance because of its bigger size, wider open aperture, and because it has sensor shift stabilization, you can even do long exposures handheld. It's basically impossible to take a bad low light photo here unless you're, I don't know, you're taking a photo with literally no light or you're doing this. You're like shaking it around trying to take the picture. If you take a normal picture, you will do great. I will continue to give the iPhone 13 mini the crown of the perfect family camera. It's super small, it's unobtrusive, yet the pictures are phenomenal and it just lets you be in the moment. And I don't know that I can overstate that enough. When I bring my big cameras along to family things, they just get in the way. I'm either too worried about what I'm going to do with the camera so they stay in my bag, or I bring them out for a few shots and that's it. I can't get the same, and I don't know how to say this, but sustained amount of pictures over time. I will take more photos more often with my mini than I ever would with my full frame mirrorless cameras. And that means statistically, I'm more likely to get a higher amount of better pictures overall. And because I have this, I have no desire to buy a dedicated point and shoot camera, which most of those actually cost far more than the 13 mini. If you're gonna get a good point and shoot camera, they cost between 700 and like 1400 bucks. Video wise, it's pretty good too. I haven't really been using that cinematic mode since the initial release because I'm not a vlogger. I don't do lots of video of myself walking around, but both the front facing and rear facing camera options here will give you very good video files. Like I said, it's basically the perfect family camera. And the last thing that I've really liked that I wanna to touch on here is the power. No, not really the benchmark levels of power because benchmarking a cell phone processor Sounds pretty crazy to me. Who's really using this to do like big, major power user tasks, right? Like, but what I continue to like here is that we have a very robust user experience. I've had no major issues, no slowdowns, and it just works really well. The only major power task that I do with this phone is in photo editing, and with the new A15 Bionic, it's instant. And that's, when you think about the amount of machine learning and computational stuff that these apps do in the background, it's, I'm still shocked that my phone can instantly handle it. I have run a couple of games to test it out as well, but the smaller screen size doesn't exactly lend itself towards playing games, but again, no issue. Apple has done a fantastic job of all of the power they were able to put into their processors. It will feel a little clunkier to use than the 13 Pro or the 13 Pro Max because this tops out at 60 hertz refresh rate and those phones can go up to 120 hertz thanks to ProMotion, but much like the battery life dislike, if you don't have the 13 Pro series literally right next to you, you won't be able to tell the difference. And I think this works really well with the screen and processor technology it's got. Obviously, the main thing that power really gets you is longevity. So if you are looking for the phone that will get updates the longest, this and the other members of the 13 squad will keep you with the latest and greatest Apple software for years to come. But at the end of the day, so what, right? I love the iPhone mini lineup. I have heard the rumors that this is the final iPhone mini and that 
breaks my heart because no kidding, this is like the perfect size of a cell phone in my opinion. It's still bigger than older phones and it still has a huge amount of screen real estate compared to older phones. It just doesn't take the size to overwhelming levels and if this is the last one, I will be sad about it. I still easily recommend this phone if you are looking to get into the iPhone lineup. I think there are a ton of updates from last year's model that's worthy of upgrading or even getting this instead of an older or used iPhone 12 mini. The only reason I would say to stay away from this is if you get nervous about battery life. This will make it through a day, but it might be tight depending on how you want to use your phone. If you plan on keeping that screen on literally all day, I'd probably steer you towards the 13 Pro Max. But if not, if you're more of a reasonable person in use of your phone, yeah, the 13 mini is amazing. And if you like this video and you want to see some of my favorite accessories for the iPhone 13 mini, good news. I've got a video that you can find by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.